Yes. Yes. Um, uh, Todd Terry and Cecilia Birmingham, uh, mother and father in the film, are here. Come on up. Uh, editor Melanie and Ann, and our producer <laughs> Molly. Where are you? I will repeat your questions, so just give me a chance to do so, so everyone can hear everything. Um, but Lian, this is such a lyrical, wonderful film. Can you just talk about the seed? What made you want to make this? What was the first little bit of inspiration? Well, the first, uh, honestly, the first inspiration was Willie Nelson and uh, his fantastic town, uh, Luck, Texas. I shot a documentary with him there in the 90s, and that's where the seed got planted for this film. And, you know, Willie Nelson is a real metaphysical person. He's very uh, forward thinker, progressive thinker. He is very different as a human being. So I wanted to make the film very different. I was really drawn to um, connections, uh, how missed opportunities happen in life with families and people, and the idea of you know, the sort of miracles of death in a way. We're always so grief stricken, but life can, you know, paths can open and miraculous things can happen to people. Um, and often we're too sad to see it. So these are all things I wanted to explore and build this beautiful magic sort of childlike fairy tale world. It's, it's beautiful and clearly very visual in each moment. You really take your time with it. Um, can you talk just a little bit about um, the visual part of this, you know, kind of deciding what it was going to look like? Well, you know, I was really a fan of The Blue Bird by Walter Lang. It's an amazing old film. And that had always stayed with me as a filmmaker. So I tried to do something that was very colorful and had ideas about, you know, there's a beautiful scene in The Blue Birds. They wander through a graveyard and the children are sitting on a gravestone and they start to remember their grandparents. And the grandparents come to life, and the children are all shocked, and the grandparents say, you know, every time you think about us, we wake up. And so that was sort of a plan of the father figure, and the way he takes her through uniting her mother with her real family. And that was not something he was able to do when he was alive, but he could do it at his death. So those sorts of things I'm very drawn to, that sort of miracle type of um, Things. Can we talk about the editing a little bit? Um, it's got really a very unique pace to it in a lovely sort of way. Um, can you can you talk about uh, you know what your process was like for that? Um, yeah, I think our, our process was just uh, taking our time with it and as you say, keeping it in a cool nature. Um, the main thing we were having such wonderful performances to work with. I mean, Charlotte Rampton, and William Nelson, and Sophie Lowe, they were all so brilliant. So it was, and she did really have pause, and Todd Terry. Everyone was just amazing, so great. Yeah, no, it's it's great really, to work with. very well done. Can you guys talk about, in sort of reading the script, like the moment that maybe you decided that you were ready to take on the roles that you did? Anything that where you're like, oh, I can see this and I really want to be in it, and it feels like me. Um, hi, I'm Sheila. Uh, from the very first moment that I read the script, I loved the character of Betty Winter. I mean, she was just so fucked up and gorgeous <laughs> and crazy, and I love that. I mean, you can't get better as an actress to play somebody who's so lost and who's looking for a way, you know? So that was my first reaction. Oh. Yes. Uh, actually, I, I didn't read the script. Well, no, I read the script, but I didn't. I didn't have the script when we auditioned. So, okay. 
so no, I, I loved the script once I read it, but what was interesting is you know, you see a you see something before you and then you get to see what it looks like on film because we shot a lot of stuff, you know, with direct interaction between the father and right. the daughter. And I thought it was a great choice that she had. We ended up doing a lot of voiceover after the fact too. But I liked how that was interlaid over it. I thought it was actually more powerful, I guess, you know, how it played out. So um, and for you, when did you get kind of attached to the film? How did, how's your relationship with Leanne? Leanne, um, that was the long haul. I think okay. it was six, 16 years ago. I think it was like 16 years ago. Leanne um, approached me about helping her produce this, and we went through a lot of different versions of the script, and at one point we were going to do it for a bigger budget, right, right, right when the cash happened in 2007, and our money fell through, and then we stayed together. It was a big commitment, and I was just, so honored and pleased that I was able to stay with it and see it through her, through her its fruition and through her amazing we made it for nothing. <laughs> we made it for nothing and it was, we want to say a timeless film, a timeless film with very little money, so it was definitely a labor of love. I'd love to hear about some of the questions that we've been Yeah, let's go ahead and open up for questions and I'll just repeat them after you ask. Anyone? Yes, over here. from the beginning the woman in the white dress and also um, her standing in front of the white dress. I mean, in front of the You know, that was important to have the sort of essence of family, you know, that was a very strong, they were obviously family. Those old photos were meant to be family members. That was sort of just a little um, more connection, you know, the, the importance of family. Good, very, very good that you picked that up. Thank you. <laughs> no, but that was very, that was very um, true. That was what it was meant to be, certainly. And you know, I'll, um, we have a props person here, Chris. I hope he's still here. Uh, but he just did the most incredible job of, 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 you know, looking at my script and being able to read into it all of these things that you know, no one else could have done. He just did such a miraculous job, and it was amazing. So, I have him to thank for a lot of that. He was just was able to help read my mind and, and, and really bring a whole layer of, uh, of imagination to it. And wardrobe, too. We weren't, we're not going to say Jillian, she didn't come. No kidding. <laughs> um, no, she did an incredible job on wardrobe. Everybody did. We had the most incredible crew, all from Austin. I mean, really incredible people and so talented. So thank you to all of you that are here. Um, okay. Any other questions out here? Yeah, thank okay. you. How did you find, yeah? Were you, were, are you familiar with sort of the story of, um, or maybe someone that has experienced adoption or finding you know, that personal that came from, um, I didn't meet my father till I was about 26 years old. And when I met him, uh, it was very strange because I don't think anyone who's experienced that can quite understand what it's like to meet somebody that um, is so ingrained in you but you don't know them. And that was really the driving force behind the story of her, you know. And, and it's really true, you know. As you're a kid, you think about reaching out, but you think, what if he hangs up on me? Or he doesn't want to see me? And, um, sorry. And so that part of it was really important. Because I think a lot of people have that situation that happens to them and it doesn't really get talked about. Well, you handle it's it. all happy stories. Sorry. No, you handle it beautifully. I mean, the last scene is a testament to that. It's like just the idea of this sort of tightrope that you're walking at all times and you're always off balance. And, and it's just sort of a really beautiful, lovely metaphor. You did that super well. Thank you. Um, other questions? 
How did Bono and Gun Benders get involved? Well, you know, sadly, just because they're friends of mine and I drag them into this. <laughs> just for no other reason. Seriously. <laughs> Good to have friends, you know. Yeah. Friends are always good. <laughs> you know, I mean, how, how are we going to help Leanna make this movie? Just, you know, whatever we need to do. So, that was basically it. That's great. Yeah. Way back there. Yes, I really um, appreciate the use of the Native American myth in the story. Was that always there, or? The use of Native American symbols? The Native American myth. Well, you know, it's sort of ambivalent. They're not really native. They're not really mentioned as Native American. They're sort of ambivalent characters. You know, I didn't want to make them specifically um, Native American, so I didn't really have any uh, dialogue or anything referring to that. So, um, yeah, it's also like. Um, you know, early uh, Mexico, you know, that sort of yeah. indigenous of America, people too from Mexico and well, that well, area. It was, it was beautiful. Oh, good. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was important that that also that sort of memory, it was sort of those ideas of memory that they were part of the sort of history memory, you know, of, of, of that magical place. That they were a part of it, you know. I, I've lost the daughter, so the movie was very Oh, good. Thank you. I'm so glad. I'm really All glad. that spirit was very Good. Cool. That was meant to be that spirit of, of, you know, native people of the land that, you know, we belong to them. So, great. Question here? Can you tell us about how, sorry, I'm sorry, just so people in the back didn't hear, um, how Willie became attached to the project or how you approached him for it? Well, you know, I got my, Willie Nelson hired me as as a director first back in the 90s. I did a music video for Willie and, a, and an EPK, and based on that, he asked me to do a documentary for PBS called WillieNelson.com. And I promised him then that I would write a script for him. And I did, it took me a long time, and I went off and did other projects, um, but I always came back to it. I mean, you know, Willie has such an incredible presence on screen that people think of him so much as a musician. And I was a huge fan of Redheaded Stranger, Bill Whitliffe, I don't know if you're here, it's like, I idolized the films that he did with what he's right here, legend. Um. I idolized the films that he made with Willie Nelson. And so getting to actually, I, I, I shot my documentary on the sets of The Red-Headed Stranger, and it was my dream to make this film and go back and continue, because I don't know if you've been to the ranch and those sets, it's just so iconic and magical that they're still there. And, you know, those are the best films that Willie ever made were, were these films with Bill Whitlip. And, and that was a huge inspiration to me. So, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, bring Willie back to the screen in, in an emotional way and remind people what a great connector he is as an actor, you know, not just a musician. Um, and back to those films that he did. Um, okay, so unfortunately we are out of time, but we can continue this conversation out in the uh, lobby or in up front. Uh, thank you.